Robin Fountain Pen Journey with a review of the Faber Castell Grip in Dapple Grey. Um, this is quite a cheap fountain pen from Faber Castell. I know some of their other pens are more expensive. This retails for about uh, just under twenty pounds. Um, so it's it's kind of a direct competitor with the Lamy Safari. Um, what can I say about it? It's a plastic pen. It's good quality plastic. It's not thin. It's not flimsy. Available in different colours. Um, this is the grey version. I really do quite like grey fountain pens. Plastic. Very cylindrical. It's a good length. Compare it next to a Lamy Safari. And you can see, yes, they're pretty much the same. So... Let's have a look at this pen now. There is a concave uh, finial up here with something engraved in it. I'm assuming it's the Faber Castell logo or something. So it's like a big dimple on top. It's quite good. The clip is very functional. Stiff, smooth, slides on and off. Down at the other end, we've got a domed... Um, well, it's not even a finial, domed end. It's very straight, there's no sort of tapering, the cap sticks out a bit further than the actual barrel. And the barrel has all these plastic raised um, dots or knobs on. You can see them as I turn this pen slowly. In a slightly paler grey, I'm not entirely sure how these have been moulded in or applied. Um, because, let me fit, here we go, yeah. This, all, all these, they're raised, rounded, no issues. But there is one line where you can feel it's almost like a seam running across the top of the uh, top of these, this row of dots here. It's not a seam on the barrel, so I'm not, not really sure how that is. And it, it's actually quite noticeable. With the name Grip, you kind of expect this to be very grippy. Um, but these plastic things are they're shiny, they're slippery. It's no different than the rest of the barrel. I was kind of expecting these to be rubberized of, or some sort of grippy material in some way, but they're, they're not. Um, and to be honest, they add to the aesthetic, if you like, but they don't really serve a great deal of purpose. It's certainly... It probably wouldn't be a, that much more grippy with or without these uh, these raised dots. The cap pops off. It's a decent quality cap, and there is a bit of a matte, triangular, slightly rubberized plastic section. It is not. It's not round. You can see, but it is not Lamy Safari style. Um, Similar in shape, but much less so. And I think I think it's quite comfortable. You would notice it if you're holding it on the top of the pen, but in a normal tripod grip, you're going to be fine. If you don't like this side, this type of section, then I would avoid it because you know you, you, you're never going to get on with those sort of things. And there's a small steel. Faber Castell nib, which I actually quite like, and Faber Castell nibs, in my experience, are really excellent. Very good, very consistent, very smooth, good length, nice, comfortable length. And the pen doesn't post deeply, but it does post securely, and it makes it really, really stupidly long. Um, but it's, yeah, it's, it's not a pen that I would recommend writing with posted, but you can do if you wanted to. You unscrew the barrel and it's all plastic, plastic section, and it takes standard international cartridges or converters, and it will take a long cartridge, so that's a positive. Screws back on, it's not the smoothest of threads, but I mean, there's no, there's no grinding or anything, but it's just a bit tight, that's all. Um, I would say that it is potentially possible to eyedropper this pen however because this rubberized section is somehow mated to these threads i would certainly consider using an o-ring down here if you were going to eyedropper this pen but it would hold a lot of ink 
And the threads look certainly deep enough to be uh, eye dropperable. They're not the most numerous, but a bit of silicone grease on those and an O-ring. I think you could probably could eye dropper this pen quite comfortably. It does sort of lock into place as well when you tighten it, which is quite nice. You know, there's, there's some engineering gone into this. Comfortable pen to hold compared to the Ua Lamy Safari. Very, very similar in length. If you're going to post them, then you'll see what I mean about these things being quite long. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's not a pen I'd post. But the writing experience, let's have a look at that. On post it. <laughs> this nib does not dry out at all. Father Castell. Grip. In dapple grey. It gets very confusing because there are some other colours like anthracite and other uh, Faber Castell's coloured naming conventions can be a bit confusing. This has got a medium nib and it is incredibly nice to write with. Very smooth, very consistent, great writing experience straight out of the box. Oh, the ink is Sykes Kreuznach. And I probably will spell this incorrectly. Kreuznach. Slate Grey. Which I think is quite a decent dark grey ink, especially for this fountain pen. Reverse writing, it just doesn't. So forget about that. Um, there's no real line variation. You can squeeze a little bit more in counts if you press down, but I'd seriously not bother doing that. Medium to wet nib. And it's just excellent. That is Faber-Castell. Faber-Castell is, I think, one of the most underrated German brands for... Cheaper fountain pens, I think that their cheap fountain pens cost more than the Lamy Safari, but they are, in fact, better writers. Um, the design, kind of like the Lamy Safari, isn't quite as divisive, but it, it's, it's not the most beautiful pen. But for a cheap, plastic, good quality fountain pen, well-made fountain pen, yeah, I'd... I'd, I'd say it's pretty much up there with the Lamy Safari, if not better. Certainly the nibs are better quality. Um, Faber-Castell nibs are really, really good. Dogs are barking at something, sorry about that. That's the nature of this household. Um, yeah, black plastic feed under there. Little fins, quite small, I'd say probably a number five nib. Um, possibly even a number four, it is quite Oh, it's tiny, um, but it's it's really good. I think it actually still matches the size of the pen. And I'm really happy with these. The only thing is, I would say, it just, I don't know, there's just parts of it that you just kind of think, it, it just feels like it's a couple of pounds more expensive than it really ought to be. I think if this was exactly the same price as Alami Safari, you'd probably say, yeah, I'm happy with either or. Um, and maybe if you were absolutely dedicated to the nib, you're probably going to go with this and you avoid the whole Lamy clip, paper clip, shaped clip of the Safari. But I, I like it. I think it's a good everyday carry. It's a good daily writer. It's consistent. Caps, a little bit stiffly. 
pops on and uh, clicks on and off. And it does take a little bit of effort. So it's not like as easy to uncap and cap. But it gives you a really good seal. Never had any issues with this hard starting at all. Um, overall, I'd say, yeah, if you're in the market for a cheap fountain pen, don't want to spend any more than £20. The Faber-Castell Grip is definitely one that you should consider. If you've already got a Lamy Safari and you think, yeah, I just want something similar but maybe not quite the same, um, this is a good alternative. It's not quite as well engineered. I mean, you can see up here with the bottom of the clip, there is a it's not a big seam, but it's noticeable and you can feel it just there on the cap. And that line, that one row of dots is it's kind of annoying because it's quite sharp when you run your finger back and forth across that one particular row. But other than that, yeah, it's, it's a really, really good fountain pen and it's the writing experience which makes this so good. It's much like the Faber-Castell Fresh, you know, I thought that pen was just going to be a cheap knockabout pen that I take to work. It is. Um, it's cheaper than this, uglier than this, but my God, it writes so well. And this is definitely, yeah, same ballpark with Faber-Castell nibs. Really enjoy them. So thank you very much for watching and I shall see you next time. Bye.